X-ray production in an X-ray tube. The applied potential difference across an X-ray tube is 40 kilovolts, and the current passing through it is 30 milliamperes. A. Determine the number of electrons striking the target per second. B. Determine the speed at which the electrons strike the target. C. Determine the minimum wavelength of the X-rays produced. Now you can see this X-ray tube set up here, we have a heated filament, electrons are boiled uh, uh, off this tungsten filament and they are accelerated towards a target, they hit the target and they scatter uh, and uh, at the same time uh, this target is uh, in this problem kept at a potential difference of 40 kilovolts with respect to ground and we observe a 30 milliamperes current uh, flowing through this a circuit and this metal target for example could be copper. So let's start with uh, part A. So I'm going to call N a number of electrons striking the target per second. which is basically what we are after. And this N can be calculated uh, by looking at the total charge that is striking the target per second. So we have total charge striking per second. And if we divide this total charge by the electron charge, then we would be finding the number of electrons striking the target per second. Now, what is this uh, total charge? It is capital Q, and we're going to divide it by the electron charge E. So, knowing that the current that flows through uh, the circuit is 30 milliamperes, I see that the total charge that hits in one second is the current times delta T divided by the electron charge gives me N, which is 30 milliamperes, 30 10 to minus 3, hitting the target in one second, divided by the electron charge 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs. So I find that N is equal to 1.87 times 10 to 17 uh, per second. So this is the number of electrons striking the target uh, per second so that I'm going to observe this uh, current flowing through the circuit. Let's move on to part B. Now, I know that these electrons are accelerated under a constant potential difference. Electrons are accelerated under a constant potential difference, delta V. So the energy that they will gain, delta E, uh, after they boil off from the tungsten filament uh, under this potential difference will be the charge of the electron Q times the potential difference, delta V, which is E times V, the potential difference that I'm applying. And this will be converted into kinetic energy of the electron uh, mass of the electron times velocity of the electron square. This is the velocity of the electron just before it hits the target. So I will find that the velocity squared will be equal to 2 EV divided by mass of the electron. 
Uh, and in part B, this is basically what we want to know, determine the speed at which the electrons strike the target. So uh, let's find V square. This will be 2 times 1.6 10 to minus 19 coulombs electron charge, 40 kilovolts, 4 times 10 to 4 volts, divided by mass of the electron, which is 9.11 10 to minus 31 kilograms, the rest mass of the electron. So I find V square to be 1.405 times 10 to 16, which means the velocity the electrons will gain just before they hit the target, 1.19 times 10 to 8 meters per second. Now let's move on to part C. Uh, what is the minimum wavelength of the X-rays produced? Now if you look at the uh, intensity, X-ray intensity as a function of wavelength, uh, remember from the lecture that we have Bremsstrahlung uh, background that's due to the deceleration of the electrons in the field of the, uh, the target, uh, target atoms, the electron clouds in the target um, surface. Uh, and uh, there is a minimum wavelength that we can uh, find. For example, uh, this is uh, for copper and molybdenum, K alpha and K beta radiations. You can see that we have a minimum possible wavelength and intensity. Now, why do we have a minimum possible wavelength and intensity? This is the wavelength at which all electron kinetic energy is converted to photon energy. So, uh, minimum lambda occurs when all electron kinetic energy is converted to photon energy. The photon energy is Planck's constant times frequency or Planck's constant times the speed of light C uh, divided by lambda minimum. So this will be equal to the uh, kinetic energy that the electron has acquired in the potential difference V. So it's going to be equal to EV. So I find that the minimum wavelength will be equal to HC divided by EB and so I'm going to substitute for Planck's constant 6.626 or roughly 6.63 10 to minus 34 joule seconds speed of light is 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second electron charge is 1.6 10 to minus 19 coulombs and the potential difference is 4 times 10 to 4. So uh, this gives me a lambda minimum of 3.11 times 10 to minus 11 uh, meters, which is 0.3 angstroms. So this is roughly 0 0.3 angstroms. That is the minimum wavelength we observe in the X-ray intensity as a function of wavelength. Uh, obviously, for X-ray diffraction experiments, we will be using the K-alpha and K-beta radiations where we have the maximum intensity in the uh, intensity versus wavelength uh, graph. So 0.3 angstroms is basically uh, roughly around here. It's less than 0.5 angstroms. So this uh, seems to be correct. Uh, now, one other thing uh, I have to be careful about is the velocity of the electron that I have found here is 1.19, 10 to 8 meters per second. That has to be uh, less than the speed of light. So, uh, it is less than the speed of light. So, um, um, 
uh, it's it's a little bit too high, but uh, it would be nice to uh, have a relativistic correction uh, when we have when we reach such uh, high speeds. But in this case, I'm using the non-relativistic approximation. Okay, so uh, to summarize, we looked at X-ray production in an X-ray tube where we have electrons boiling off a tungsten filament accelerated under a constant potential uh, to hit a target with a kinetic energy that's equal to the charge of the electron multiplied by the potential energy and that results in a current flow to the ground we can determine the number of electrons striking the target per second by looking at the total charge that flows in one second uh, divided by the, the electron charge we can determine uh, the final speed of the electrons be just before they hit the target uh, by looking at the conversion from uh, electrical potential energy to kinetic energy EV equals one half mv square in the non-relativistic approximation and uh, you can determine the minimum wavelength in the X-rays produced. The photon energy corresponds to the uh, kinetic energy of the electrons that hit the target. This is when we have uh, the electrical potential energy totally converted to photon energy. And that corresponds to 0.3 angstroms. And we can check the... Uh, validity of these results in the X-ray intensity versus wavelength data uh, from International Union of Crystallography for copper, you can see that uh, 0.3 angstroms is roughly where we have the minimum. Um, and in addition, we have these uh, K-alpha and K-beta radiations, the maximum in the intensity, uh, and which, is, which is what we will use for X-ray diffraction experiments. And then we have a continuous background Bremsstrahlung due to the deceleration of electrons in the field of the um, core electrons in, uh, at the surface of the uh, metal, uh, copper metal.